Hi, welcome. I'm Frank Cabri, VP of Marketing at Centrify, and welcome to another Chalk Talk. In our last Chalk Talk session, we got into Direct Manage, a new product offering from Centrify, uh, which includes the Zone Provisioning Agent. And today's Chalk Talk, we're going to go into a little more detail around the Zone Provisioning Agent, its capabilities, and how administrators can take advantage of it in their networks. And to do this today, we have David McNeely, our Director of Product Management. Welcome, David. Thanks, Frank. So. Um, Let's talk about zone provisioning. I want to show you how to use it um, as a way to automate the management of user membership into a zone which grants access to a set of systems. Uh, again, we use zones as a way to control which set of users have profiles that grant them rights to log into those machines. We find a lot of our customers use a lot of zones uh, as a way to sub-break down the set of systems that they have in the environment and to grant access very specifically to those systems based on a user's need to access that particular business system. So in some cases, there may be a few numbers of zones. In other cases, there may be a fairly large number of zones. But making it easy to manage the membership in those zones uh, helps with the controlling access across the environment. Um, and I'll show you how to use Active Directory groups in order to do that. So let's get started with uh, this, and I'll show you the, the console and how to add users into a group and use the groups as a way to control access to the zones. I have a virtual uh, machine set up with a domain controller on my system and a couple of zones created. And the first is, let's uh, look at a couple of these zones. So uh, in the, I've got two different zones created. One's pharmacy zone, and if I look at the set of users, I have uh, one user provisioned. Um, and with the store systems, uh, I don't have any users in there yet because we're going to set that one up and I'll show you how it works. Looking at the pharmacy uh, environment, uh, one of the things that's, uh, I'll, I'll just show you the properties, because zone provisioning shows up as a property page for this zone now. Um, sort of like we added direct authorize and it became a new property page, provisioning is now a property page as well. I turn on auto provisioning and I tell it that the, the Active Directory group that's going to control which users get provisioned is the pharmacy users group. And I have the ability to control also the, how the UID is constructed. Uh, what the login name looks like, the shell, the home directory, primary group, those kinds of things. And it's because <clears throat> in some cases we want to override what those are. In this case, I've said let's generate the user ID from the Active Directory SID. In other words, it's going to be automatically provisioned. I don't need to have any other Unix data already provisioned in the directory in order for this to work correctly. I could, if I wanted to, copied you know, RFC 2307 data or copied it from a, quote, master zone, just another zone that we use to be the master. And uh, the login name, I'm just going to use the SAM account name attribute. Um, but again, we could have pulled this out of RFC 2307 if we wanted. Now, now that that is run, that's configured that way, let me show you also the uh, zone provisioning agent configuration panel because this is sort of like a control panel. <clears throat> it says that uh, it will monitor the Active Directory domain. I've set the polling interval down to three minutes. Normally, you would have that set to 30 minutes or 60 minutes because it's just it's too much work if we have it triggered too often. And you can give it an account to run with, um, start and stop the service, those kinds of things. It runs as a Windows service on this particular machine. Um, once that's been set up, the, the idea is that now if I look at the groups within the pharmacy, I see David McNeely. And that's because uh, if we go back over here to Active Directory and uh, find the pharmacy users, which is the group that we told it to be the control, the members only shows David. So let's add someone else. Um, I'll add uh, Tim Wilson, and uh, we'll add him into the group. And there's his account. If I add another user, uh, let's just add in uh, like Mike. Um, I've got a couple of mics. We'll use Mike Patnode, and say OK. If I go back to the uh, zone itself, it's going to take it, remember, up to three minutes maximum. And if I uh, hit refresh within three minutes, uh, we should expect to see uh, that these people added in. One of the things I can do is, uh, since we're in a, a test environment here, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to that agent and just tell it to restart the service. And that'll have the effect of causing it to run immediately. So now if I go back and uh, click refresh, now I see those three users have been added, David, Mike, and Tim Wilson. Now, in order to do this and set it up uh, for a new zone, it's really a matter of just going to that zone, uh, right-clicking on the properties. Uh, we click on the provisioning tab, click enable auto provisioning, and I need to select a, a group. Um, in this case, I'm using group names that are very similar to the name of the zone. So store systems is the name of the zone, so I'm just going to say store users and use that Active Directory group. 
And in this case, I'll pull from RFC 2307 data, or let's say source zone. And it also highlights a source zone down here, so I can browse and say, you know, my default zone is going to be um, the source. Um, because we normally have, in a lot of our environments, for demonstration purposes, we make it easier to set up a, a default zone. So I'll use that as the source data set uh, for a UID. And the name of the user can be source uh, zone as well. Um, the shell, the home directory, I might want to specify exactly what I want those to be. Um, and we'll just use the zone defaults. Remember when we set up the zone, we set some defaults for this particular zone that the shell would be bash and the home directory would be in the slash users directory. Um, tell it okay for that. And it's gonna tell me that the zone is now auto-provisioned. Any new profiles are gonna be created um, automatically for this uh, zone by the tool itself. And so now if I go back to the uh, users tab and hit refresh, um, again, we'll probably have to wait that uh, interval but uh, I can, again, kickstart that zone provisioning configuration panel and just tell it to restart. Most of the time when you're doing some testing like this, you'll find you'll need to do those kinds of things. But uh, for production environments, we have a, a number of customers who are already using this on fairly large environments with um, uh, large numbers of uh, users within their uh, population. And um, one of the things we need to do in order to make this actually provision is put some members into that group, right? So again, let's say the help desk got a call and somebody said, you know, I'm, I'm a system administrator. I need access to the store systems. I need to do some work on these machines. He calls up. Uh, we can either do a search for that user and let, I'll just uh, pick on um, Kevin Smith as a user example here. Uh, he called up and wanted access. So we'd go to the uh, member of tab and it says he's a member of domain users and Oracle financials and we need to add him into the uh, store users group and that's as simple as it is. Just add him to that group and by the time the provisioning agent gets uh, done you know, reprovisioning um, just by restarting that thing, go back to the zones and click on users and hit refresh for that zone. We now see Kevin Smith has been provisioned. And the information actually came out of the default zone. He already had a Unix name of Kevin and a UID of 10007, and that uh, got provisioned automatically. So at this point, all of the users can be automatically provisioned into the zone. And one of the other benefits of using groups is that there's a, a mechanism to use our direct authorize and group membership as a way to grant people the right to actually access the system. So I just showed you how we added a single user because he called help desk and needed access to the system. But uh, one other really big advantage is, um, you know, you can go back and add an enormous number of users to the system. It automatically keeps up with it. But um, as people roll off or you want to remove users, it becomes very easy. So I'll just um, tell it I want to look for users and uh, I need to add people to this group. And I'll just start adding quite a few different users here. Um, I'm going to add uh, about five or six different users. It'll add them all in and um, give it quite a few more here. We'll even uh, give our CEO access. How about that? So now I've got a good collection of users that are in this group. And uh, again, I'll just force that uh, resynchronization uh, to run since uh, the three minute interval is not quite fast enough for the demo here. Now, if we go back and look at the zone and hit refresh, I'll see a, a quite a f large number of users getting populated. It, it uh, refreshes and it'll add them in periodically. Uh, the users that already have a profile um, in this particular case. And so there's uh, a number of users. So now if I see one that uh, I need to remove from the system, uh, one of the things I'll do is uh, just simply go back uh, to the store users group, um, look at the membership set, and let's say I want to remove uh, a user from the system. I just click on his name, click remove from the group, say yes. And now at this point, uh, you end up with um, that user being automatically re removed next uh, refresh interval on synchronization. So um, again, the <clears throat> the whole idea here is to, to just very simply manage uh, via groups, and uh, it's completely automatic. I didn't have to have anybody go in and manipulate or touch any zones. 
uh, we just had to use Active Directory user and computer or whatever tool you may be using to provision the directory and uh, put people in and out of uh, Active Directory groups. So with that, um, that's a quick high-level overview of how to use uh, group membership as a way to manage, uh, automatically manage zones on your system, and it can be pretty easy, easily done from any other tool. Again, we've got a lot of customers that uh, tend to use a lot of different uh, tools like Tivoli Identity Manager or Oracle's uh, Suns. Um, a lot of different tools are in place at different uh, sites that we find, and it just makes it a lot easier if you can use an Active Directory group, the existing processes to manage that. Um, as a way to control who can gain access to your systems. Thanks, David. And that wraps up this Chalk Talk on the Zone Provisioning Agent. Hope that was useful for you. Please join us again soon. Thanks.